Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Once again, a big chunk of Chinese space junk is on its way back to Earth. Now, this is not an altogether uncommon occurrence because China has something of a reputation for dropping spent booster stages from rockets that come from its inland sites near to or on places where people live. But this is different. This is a 23-ton core stage from the largest rocket they have, which is currently in orbit around the Earth and could fall back to Earth practically anywhere and we're not even sure of the time or place. So this is the core from the Long March 5B and believe it or not we had this exact same problem the last time they used the rocket in 2020. Long March 5 is the biggest rocket China has. It's a top tier launch vehicle comparable to the Proton, Delta IV, Ariane 5 or Falcon 9. It's, a f it's got a fully cryogenic core uh, using liquid oxygen and hydrogen and it has four strap-on boosters that burn kerosene and liquid oxygen to get high you know, thrust to, for launch. There's a second stage that sits on top of this that uses liquid hydrogen and oxygen, but the 5B doesn't actually use this. It skips that and puts the payload directly on the core stage, and that's why that giant core has been left in orbit after putting the Tianhe module up into orbit. So yeah, it's about 23 tons, we think, and you would think they could bring it back, right? Well, during the live stream, according to some Chinese-speaking you know, fans I have, there were some comments about deorbiting this stage, according to the commentators. But if that was actually the plan, then it must have gone wrong. Or it might be the commentators just don't know what they're talking about, which is quite common, to be honest. Uh, people on the ground observing the stage hours after it launched showed that it was spinning and as of yesterday it was spinning at about 12 rpm and that is an object that's like 33 meters long or 100 feet long and uh, you know even video of the deployment showed that it might have been rotating as the space station module receded from the upper stage or the, the core stage let's say yeah, we only have estimates of the mass, by the way. Those are based on sort of Chinese media reports, which state that it has, it's 187 tons fuel or full with 165 tons of propellant. So that's where 23 tons come from. And that's actually comparable to the module at launch, but that's largely a coincidence. And importantly, it's also about twice the mass of the Tiangong station, which re-entered uncontrollably back in, I think, 2018. Now this booster is not the largest thing to return to Earth in an uncontrolled fashion. That dubious honour belongs to Skylab, which was a 70-ton space station, and after a few crews had visited it, they left it in orbit with the plan that the space shuttle would be able to rendezvous with it and boost its orbit. The problem was the space shuttle wasn't ready yet, and it took way longer to develop than they expected. By the time the space shuttle was even getting close, Skylab was skimming through the upper atmosphere and threatening to fall anywhere in the planet. So NASA did what it could. It couldn't adjust the orbit because it didn't have propellant, but it could adjust the attitude and change the amount of drag that it was experiencing. So they steered it as best they could and it ended up landing in Australia, which was probably fine because, um, well, the local wildlife was more dangerous than Skylab could be. But many people also forget that the second stage of the Saturn V that launched Skylab, that also stayed in orbit after it put the station into orbit. And that meant that it was an uncontrolled object. It was about 30 tons and it spent 18 months in orbit before just by luck it deorbited over the ocean. And that is the largest fully uncontrolled re-entry. Now, over on the Soviet Union side, they actually mostly kept their Salyut stations under control for deorbits. But in the case of Salyut 7, um, it was also boosted into a storage orbit with the plan that the Soviet shuttle, the Buran, would be able to boost its orbit. And we all know that didn't work either. I mean, shuttle development is clearly not something to be making predictions about. Uh, when Salyut 7 re-entered, it ended up being visible from Argentina, but the debris probably ended up out in the ocean and nothing was found uh, to be found. But anyway, the vast majority of big pieces of hardware are well controlled, like the 120-ton Mir space station, which was so well controlled that people were actually chartering flights to the landing zone so they could watch this monster thing re-enter and burn up over the Pacific.
And of course, after Skylab, NASA made sure to dispose of every single Space Shuttle external tank. Each of these was over 30 tons of inert mass. Uh, these were dropped by the Space Shuttle and they were dropped such that it wasn't fully in orbit. Uh, and its trajectory would ensure that when it was carried out and hit the atmosphere, it would be re-entering over the ocean. The shuttle, of course, had to use its orbital maneuvering system to complete the orbital insertion to stay in space. So yeah, generally, if anything large is being deorbited in a destructive fashion, it's aimed so that it will re-enter in the middle of a convenient ocean. There's a point in the middle of the Pacific where hundreds of satellites have been deorbited, although most of them will burn up completely, so there's no like large chunks of space hardware littering the bottom of the Pacific Ocean to be found. So yeah, this is the second time that China has flown this rocket, and both times has resulted in an uncontrolled re-entry for that core. And it's I'm going to say it's pretty darn embarrassing that they lack the will to do this properly, right? I don't know what's wrong with them. I hope they can fix their problem. In so May of 2020, the same booster design burned up over the Atlantic. And some debris did actually make it all the way down range to Africa. And a piece was found in the Ivory Coast, which looked to me like some plumbing, possibly an oxygen pipe. And, you know, to be fair, recently we had a similar thing happen with a SpaceX second stage where they wanted to perform the deorbit burn, but it failed, and it ended up deorbiting randomly and dropping debris over Washington State in Canada. Um, and this is a very rare occurrence, though, because they generally they're able to put these things down safely. And yeah, this is much smaller stage as well. I mean, I wish I could tell you where this core would land. Indeed, you might think that since we can accurately predict orbits months ahead, it should actually be pretty easy to figure this out, right? Newton's laws are simple, right? But the thing is, this is true for high orbits where the atmospheric drag has very little effect, but lower down in the atmosphere, this isn't the case. The weak influence of the atmosphere very quickly causes your, our orbits to diverge from our idealized calculations. Like in an ideal model, the drag slows the satellite down, which in response falls down to a lower orbit. And then paradoxically, because it's in a lower orbit, it actually has to go faster. So the drag, which is pushing to slow it down, actually results in the satellite moving faster in a lower orbit. It's confusing, but that's orbital mechanics. It's weird like that. Also, you know, if the orbit is elliptical with a, sig you know, a significant difference between the perigee and the apogee, then the high point, the apogee, will descend faster than the low point, right? It'll tend to get more circular over time. But yeah, eventually a decaying satellite gets so low that it very quickly begins to lose altitude due to the drag, the atmospheric density builds up, and eventually the whole thing gets torn apart by aerodynamic forces and destroyed by atmospheric heating. And a few bits of debris may make it to the ground. But I'm going to say, if you're seeing this thing flying overhead, you're probably safe from debris because anything light enough to slow down and fall on you is going to burn up before then. It's the stuff that's going to survive that tends to move further down range. And so, yeah, worry about people down range from you. <laughs> but yeah, predicting this decay is complicated further by the fact that the Earth isn't a proper sphere. It's kind of lumpy. And the atmosphere actually is kind of lumpy too. And it changes over time as solar activity you know, causes your changes in the atmosphere. And there's no like really good measurements for how this changes like in real time. Like the best you can do is actually take a look at what's happening to your satellite and try to infer what the atmosphere is for the next pass. And so yeah, we're 24 hours out from the predicted entry time and we still have error bars of plus or minus six hours. That's 12 hours, that's ridiculous. It, and in that 12 hours, it's going to travel around the world eight times. So there's no chance of figuring out what longitude it'll end up at. On the bright side, because we know the inclination, we know that it has to be south of 42 degrees north and north of 42 degrees south. And so that rules out most of Europe, Canada, Russia. Uh, they're all safe. But a lot of the USA is still covered by that. The whole continent of Africa, most of the Americas, Australia, New Zealand, Middle East, India, and of course, China are all inside this region. And don't worry, because the odds of it ending up near you are staggeringly small, and the odds of it landing in the ocean are about 70%. And you know, if we use that narrowed 12-hour window, 
you can actually plot the orbit that you expect it to take over that time. And it looks like South Africa is ruled out. And I don't think I'm going to see it in California because we're right on the very edge of the far end of the window. But you, know, we've cut it down to half a day and we really haven't made much of a difference in the land area it could hit. So yeah, over the weekend, the precision should get better and maybe it will be visible for some people. Maybe we will get some great pictures of this re-entry of this monster thing breaking up in the sky, which will be nice. And hopefully no one will get hurt. But you know what would be really nice? It would be nice if China would fix the Long March 5B to bring it up to date with modern rockets and make it like a good orbital citizen. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.